Today, I have a handful of really simple DIY homemade RV accessories you can use in the RV and are actually worthwhile. How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. First on our list for our DIY homemade accessories is something to cover the roof vent up there in extreme heat or when you want to block out the light. These are what I would call our extreme weather insulation kit slash Alaska block the light out kit. So uh, this is just a simple piece of rigid foam with a little reflectix on the back. Not all of them that we make have the reflectix on the back, but I did this because in the summer, sometimes the heat just comes pouring in through these vents and giving it just one more layer that it has to get through and being able to reflect that heat up helps cool the RV a little bit more efficiently. You can also use it in the winter time to help keep that heat inside when it's extremely cold. So I just cut these to the, the same shape and dimensions of the vent up there and I keep it snug. So you can just place them in there and they just stay. Now there is an official solution out there for blocking up your vents and insulating them. That's about $16, which isn't that bad, but times four vents. And here we did this for about 16 bucks for all four vents. So um, I like the pillow idea. I'll put a link down in the description to those, uh, but these work really well. We just did them quickly when we were in a pinch and wanted to uh, have the RV be a little bit more efficient in the heat. And because they work so well, we've just kept them on and just keep using them. Now, moving on to number two, it'll be quick and simple because this tip has been around a while, but we do it slightly different. So we use Reflectex in the windows when we need to for, again, extreme heat or when we want to block out light when you're in Alaska. Now, what we do different is we put these little command Velcro sticky pads on there. So we clean it with rubbing alcohol, put the command strip on there, and we also put the command strip on the window. So we can just stick these on there and that's going to hold it in place. Sometimes we can cut them a little bit larger and they just kind of nest right in there. But the ones that don't, if we have these little Velcro pads on there, it just helps keep it in place and easy to put up and you don't have to fight it quite as much. If anybody has a better solution, in these little command Velcro strips. I'd love to hear it, uh, but for us, this has been working for quite some time. Now, the next few on our list are a few things that you can build. So this is one that we did a while back, and this is the brace that we use to stabilize the RV when we're using it. When we're set up at the campground, we don't want that shake and wobble inside the RV. And it was quite impressive at how well it performed. It's not as fast and easy as the steady fast, but for a couple of pieces of wood that has an angled cut, an eyelet in it, and a ratchet strap that goes across it, this had a lot of bang for the buck for being able to stabilize your RV. I'll put a link to that video so you can see the comparison. Now the next one is building pads to go underneath the stabilizers or the leveling jacks on your RV. These are really simple and basic and have been around for a long time. We used these on our last RV, but what I did rather than just getting a piece of wood and cutting it to the size of your stabilizing jack is I put a piece of plywood in the middle between two pieces of two by lumber. So the main reason I did that is because these two bys like to split, but plywood also likes to delaminate when you use it out in the, the rain and whatnot. So using that sandwiched in there helps keep these from splitting and then you don't have to go through wood blocks all the time. So using a wood block is a cheap, easy solution. We still like to use the stackable blocks on our RV because we can vary the heights of them at the different points. It helps us level up the RV, but a cheap, easy solution for sure. So this next one I don't have, but we've used in the past. Let me make a quick example. So this one is a leveling side-to-side -side system for your RV. So if you need to level your RV, you can pull up onto this with one side. We did it so it was large enough so that we could have both tires on one side at one time, so that way we could still chalk it. But you could make these however you would like. We screwed them together so we could take layers off if we needed to, uh, level up differently. But it's nice to be able to have this so that you can level up the RV. Now we still use the curved leveling blocks because it is so simple. They're very compact, very easy to use. But this is a DIY at home thing that you can make and still be able to level your RV for a lot less. These that we use, the beach lane levelers, are so easy to use, but they're around $75. Very easy to use, but they come at a higher price. We do have one more in the list for you. 
Now the last one on our list is the water filter. Because I like this type of water filter better and we didn't have a good place to be able to mount it inside of the RV, we just use it by sitting on the ground or when we're in these freezing temperatures and our pressure regulator needs to be inside, we have this connected inside our storage bay. So we use these hoses to be able to connect to each side of this filter to be able to connect in. We have adapters in here to go from the normal pipe threading to a hose fitting on there. So then once you have that in there, it's just really easy to connect in and use. And the great thing is this is about $22 and I believe the fittings are around $12 and then the filters inside you can get a pack of them for around $15. So it's going to be cheaper in the long run using the better filter. The better filter I mean that it's not just a granule carbon filter that's in there with a little bit of foam on each side. This is an actual 5 micron filter in there that has a block carbon in there so it has to force the water through that in order to use it and it keeps the the flow of rate high. I can't be the only one that noticed that I said that backwards. It keeps the rate of flow high to the RV because it's a whole house filter. I'm either dyslexic or related to Yoda, one of the two. So this thing is fantastic. In the long run, it's gonna save us money and it's a better way to filter water. So it's a lower cost solution than getting the ones that are already set up for RVing. Uh, just by putting in these adapters, you could create something so it could sit on the ground easier, but we literally just set it on the ground, connect the hose up into the RV and we're off and running. So this thing works fantastic. So that is gonna be the last thing on our DIY list of accessories. Again, links will be down in the description. If you guys have any other things that you use or do that you made that you use on your RV, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. So leave a comment down below with that information. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit the subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.